Hello, my name is Jim Garrett, and in this short video, I'd like to show you how to install the ARO tool, which is the Azure Red Hat OpenShift product. Now, for the record, you know, what exactly is ARO? Well, with ARO, it's a fully managed OpenShift environment that is deployed onto Microsoft Azure. This particular offering is jointly engineered, managed and supported by Microsoft and Red Hat. And its goal is to reduce the operational overhead and focus on quickly delivering applications that provide more value to your business while supporting your regulatory compliance. Fortunately for us, there's a OpenShift installation tutorial that Microsoft has created that gives great instructions on how to install all of the components that you need to be able to then install OpenShift. What I hope to show you in this video are some of the lessons learned that I experienced while doing this and to give you an exact series of, series of steps that provide you with the ability to install the ARO product. Clicking on the link in the previous slide will take you to this Microsoft documentation web page. You can see this is a tutorial which shows how to create an Azure Red Hat OpenShift 4.0 cluster. Notice that also there's two other tutorials. For example, the second one is how to connect to that cluster and then how to delete that cluster when you're finished. Before you begin attempting to install the Aero product, the first thing that you have to do is to download and install the command line interface called AZ. Uh, this is downloaded from Microsoft Azure website and you can see that there's a link on this page which shows you how to do that. After downloading the AZ product, you need to do several other things. For example, you need to verify your permissions and there are example commands that show you how to do that. But the core, the, the main thing you have to do is register your resource providers. However, before you register your resource providers, there's something that I need to show you regarding your Microsoft Azure uh, permissions, your subscription, and how you need to increase some of the usage quotas which are given to you by default. If you log into your Microsoft Azure portal, you'll see that you have a series of options across the top that you can choose from. The one that's most important is your subscriptions. When you established your Microsoft account, you should have created a subscription which has all of your billing information on it. For example, what's, what's the amount of your current cost that you've that you that you've done. If you drill into that prescription, you'll see that there's a subscription ID. But what you'll also notice as you scroll down in the list of things that you can look at is usage and quotas. This particular screen gives you all of the quotas that you've been given by default from Microsoft. And it's on this screen that you need to locate two of your quotas and increase them to the appropriate value. Now, the first step in, in doing that is you need to choose a location. And what I found was the location that worked best for me was the, the West US location. Once you've selected your location, you can then select your provider and I went ahead and selected all of the providers. Now there are two parameters that you need to change inside of this page. Uh, the first parameter is going to be your total regional virtual CPUs. And if you look at your value, this comes with a default value of 10. And this needs to be increased to at least 40. The way that you increase it is by selecting the pencil icon to the right, which is an edit icon. 
and you can then go in and define what you want your new limit to be. That's the first one to look at. The second one is if you do a search for standard DS version 3, this is also a family of virtual CPUs which you need to update. And again, this needs to be set to at least a value of 40. And this is changed by using the same procedure, clicking the pencil icon to edit, change your limit, and request it. Now, when you request these usages to be modified, Microsoft has the ability to either approve or reject that. The first time I tried to do this, I looked, I was using the location of East US, and I'm not sure why. However, Microsoft rejected my request to increase it to 40 CPUs. When I switched to West US, I was then able to use the correct number of CPUs for the installation. Once you have that done, and once you have copied your subscription ID, which you can get from this page, you can then go back into the tutorial. Now what's interesting about this tutorial is it does not give you any instructions on logging in to your portal. Again, what I learned is if I go out to my command line prompt, I can do a command called az login. And az login is going to pop you back into your browser. And what it allows you to do is to use your browser to log into your Microsoft Azure account. Once you're logged into Azure, you can go back out to that terminal window and it will actually convey to you all of the information about that account. For example, your home tenant ID, your ID, uh, your username, and what type of user are you. So once you've physically logged into Azure, then you can go back into this tutorial and execute the commands that it gives you. So for example, the first command we want to look at is we want to set the subscription ID in our terminal window. So I've got my, let me go back and get this command. I can go back into the Azure portal, copy that subscription ID, and paste it in. And that's all there is to it. You've, you've now set your subscription ID to the one that's inside your Azure portal. And then it's really as simple as taking each step individually, copying the command, and pasting it into your command line window. So the first one is we're going to register the Red Hat OpenShift. We're going to register the Microsoft Compute. We're going to register Microsoft Storage. And the last step is to register Microsoft Authorization. Once you've done all of those steps, this tutorial does talk about pulling your Red Hat secret. Um, this is something that is actually very important. Your Red Hat pull secret is what is going to connect this OpenShift ARO installation back to your Red Hat portal. In order to access that portal and get your cloud secret, You can go to console.redhat.com. You can log in. And the path that you need to follow is we are on, if you look at this, this is actually the a different path. Let's go down to downloads. We're in the OpenShift environment. 
if you go down to downloads, go to the very bottom, there's a pull secret that's available. And you can copy that pull secret or you can download it to your machine. Uh, I've already downloaded it to my machine, so I'm not going to do that now. But again, you go back to the tutorial and it says to download that pull secret and store it locally. There's another optional step about preparing a custom domain for your cluster. This is nice, but it's not necessary in order to just install and, and, and experiment with your OpenShift cluster. Next, we have a series of steps. The first series of steps is they recommend that you set the following environment variables. Now you'll notice that this sets location equals to East US. However, when I was back in the Microsoft Azure portal, I was using the West US. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna say export West US. And you can set your resource group to be whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and take the default. And you can set your cluster name as well. In fact, I'm just going to set my cluster name to be my initials, dash ARO. The first step that they want you to then execute is to create your resource group. And there's a command line command that allows you to do that. Again, we're just going to copy that command. We're going to let it run. It takes a few seconds to run, but then it comes back with the new resource group that's been created and where it's been, where it has been physically created in. Next step is we want to create a virtual network. Again, it's using the environment variable for resource group to tell it what resource group to use. Step four is to create an empty subnet. Using that resource group. Step five is, and again, that, that, that sub was, subnet was for the master nodes. Step five is we want to create an empty subnet for the worker nodes. And step six is we want to disable the subnet private endpoint policies on the master subnet. And then the last and final step is creating your cluster. Now, one thing you're going to want to notice, there's an optional parameter that you can pass in, which passes in the pull secret, which you downloaded from the Red Hat portal. This command does not actually have that parameter in it, so we're going to have to add it. I'll copy the, this command, and you'll see that I've already downloaded my pull secret into my current directory. And I'm going to add this pull secret text file to this command. Now, once we initiate this command, it's off to the races. It does take, oops, I guess I typed the wrong parameter in. Oh, I forgot the at sign. It does take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. 
So once this initiates and it looks like it's running without any problems, I'll pause the video and we'll return when it finishes. You can see the cluster creation has now finished. And if you want, you can scroll back through the log information to see all of the data about your specific cluster inside of Microsoft Azure. Going back to the tutorial, the next thing that we want to do is connect to our error cluster. So let's take a look at that tutorial. It's actually very, very simple to do this tutorial. Again, we've already got all of our environment variables defined. So all that we need to do is click on this command, which is going to list the credentials for our particular cluster. Now you see that the credentials it lists, it's going to give you the cube admin as well as the admin password. So with that information, you can also determine what is the, the URL, the web address for your console. Let's copy and paste that into a browser. We're going to log in as cube admin. We'll get the password. Paste it in. And this is the OpenShift Administrative Console that we just installed. Let's go back to our tutorial. Really, that's all there is in this tutorial. The next step, obviously, is if you wanted to delete your cluster, there is a command that you can use to do that as well. It's pretty simple to do. I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to show you one other thing. After you have installed the cluster, you should be able to go back into your Azure portal, go to the home screen, and you'll see that there's a virtual machines link. And by clicking on that link, you can see all of the virtual machines that were created for the OpenShift install. And in this case, there were three masters and three worker nodes. That concludes this short instructional video. I've included the two important links in this demonstration. The first link is the link to the tutorial itself. And the second link is a link to the Azure OpenShift documentation out on the Red Hat portal. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to your Red Hat sales representative.